POV. You're an anime fan in 2020. <sighs> Well, I'm deep in lockdown, but the season's pretty dry. I mean, I'm gonna be watching Kaguya, I guess I'll watch Tower of Gods, but there isn't really anything else that catches my interest. Oh well. POV. You're an anime fan in 2021. What the hell? How is this season so stacked? Attack on Titan? ReZero again? Look at all these sequels! Look at all these other shows! How the hell am I gonna find time to watch all this? Oh well. What the fuck is going on with this season? Where do I even begin? My 2020 anime of the year ReZero is finally back to complete its arc. Promised Neverland is returning with more toddlers playing 5D chess. Beastars, egging me on to convert to furryism. Slime 2 is hype, so is Log Horizon 3, so is Eurocamp 2, so is 7 Deadly- so is Cells at Work 2, Quince 2, Non on Bureau 2, and on top of all of this, we have Attack on Titan final season meeting every high expectation we had and punching straight past them. Fuck everything I said about modern anime classics, we are watching a classic being made right in front of our eyes. And I'm... Not going to be talking about any of those. Because on top of all this, we still have the non-sequel shows which by themselves are enough to match any of the seasons from last year. This might be one of the most single-packed season of anime in... the history of anime. Is this actually it? Is this where the 2021 redemption arc finally begins? Anime is doomed. One, two, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the future. For years, we've been pushing the limits of computer technology. As technology evolves, so has our approach when it comes to keeping on the cutting edge of animation. Reinventing how people see CG. Reinventing the shows that uses it. Reinventing anime itself. Five years ago, we gave you Berserk 2016. Four years ago, we gave you Berserk 2017. Today, I present to you Berserk 2077. I think we found it, guys. We found the best animated show of 2021. Apparently, this is an anime coming from a real studio with staff members who've never worked on a single anime before. <laughs> I'm absolutely shocked. I don't think I'm overstating it when I say that X-Arm may set a new standard of animation that will send ripples in the industry. Look at this 3D. I haven't seen 3D this clean since Gary's mod was released. Which I'm guessing is what it was also animated in. The lip flaps have obviously been inspired by dubbed kung fu movies by how accurate they are. They even got my favourite 2000s rock band to do the opening. Slink 183. And on top of all of this, you may not even notice but in some shots, if you look really carefully, you may see that some characters don't even inhabit the same dimension. I've seen a lot of people compare this to PS2 graphics and I don't know why people would say something so insulting to PS2 graphics. I'd say this is far more reminiscent of Cyberpunk's stunning visuals showcasing a futuristic setting and T-posing. The original trailer boldly said, and I quote, declaring war against all sci-fi series around the world, which, as bold as the claim may be, I think also technically constitutes this as a war crime. Remember this day, gentlemen, as we are witnessing history. This may actually set a new benchmark never before seen in anime. Generations from now, we'll be looking back and saying, remember that time when Attack on Titan Season 4 was airing? Was it really better than X-Arm? You know how sometimes the show is just so weird you have no idea how to describe it, so you're just grasping at straws trying to find a point of comparison? I've seen people describe this as a hybrid of about 10 different anime directed by Satoshi Ikuhara Shinkai Ano Yuasa, which just makes it more confusing. And I think they're all missing the point, because clearly, Wonder Egg is just the very first strand type anime. So this yellow hooded girl has a casual conversation with a cicada before finding some egg, seeing a bunch of girls cosplaying hentai censorship, and then having a full-blown argument with some talking toilet paper. Wanda! The egg then hatches into a girl and at this point you're just thinking, damn. 
I want whatever she's on. But as the episode unfolds, you start to get a hint of what this is actually about. We're peering into a glimpse of a damaged, broken psyche and it's up to us to piece together what really happened. What is this world? What happened to her? Why did her friend jump? It's a cerebral tale of bullying and depression and out of everything in winter, this was the one that etched its way deepest into me. I'm not gonna pretend I understood what I watched, but what I will say is that it was the only show I kept thinking about afterwards. And I don't exactly understand why. I had that slight feeling that I was watching something that could blossom into something really special. I still don't know what this is going to be about, but I'm definitely going to stick around to find out if it'll be better than next arm. I'm in this picture and I don't like it. I'd like to think for the most part that the anime and manga community are one and the same, but sometimes there comes along a title that just makes me think that manga readers live on a different plane of existence. Harimiya was a highly anticipated manga adaptation that I've never heard anyone mention or talk about prior. So when all the manga readers scurried out of their rocks to exclaim their excitement, I thought it must have a big cult following or something. So I check it out and... Huh. It's the 13th most popular manga of all time on Mal. What? From the trailer, I thought it was just going to be a serious love triangle romance drama on the likes of Toradora, but honestly, this is just wholesome as fuck. A rom-com about looking past appearances and never judging a book by its cover. For example, he may look like a straight edge nerdy student who follows the rules when really he's a secret bad boy with tattoos and piercings. And also, he's... He's, he's, he's fucking hot. And she may look like the pretty popular girl in school, but nobody knows her little secret that will change the way everyone looks at her. She's a good sister. Who does chores at home. And she wears her hair in a bun. If that's not gamer enough for you though, we've got bottom tier character Tomazaki following the top rated player in Definitely Not Smash Bros for all you real gamers, gamers out there. A true gaming anime about a gamer gamers. who's really good at gaming, gaming. meeting a gamer, gamer girl as they become gamer. gamer friends as she teaches him how to win at the biggest game of all, the game of life. Gamers. And so starts his training arc as he learns that to be a true pro gamer who wins at everything, he first needs to learn how to lose. His virginity. As someone who had zero social skills growing up, this was actually really interesting to me. It's a romantic comedy that breaks down social interactions and gamifies them, and it's a fun watch if you don't take the concept too seriously. It's a pro gamer learning how to function in society, with a cute anime girl teaching him social skills, personal hygiene, and grooming. Yes, that's right folks. This is literally the uplifting story of a Smash player discovering deodorant. You know, I feel sorry for any volleyball anime coming straight off the heels of Haikyuu, especially when it's about the bromance of an ace duo starring a genius setter who got pushed out of his previous team because of a bad attitude because, well, it's coming straight off the heels of Haikyuu. Don't think the Haikyuu squad are worrying too much about bullying, depression, and suicide, so if you're looking for a darker edition, definitely keep an eye out for this one. We got the Cells at Work spin-off, Cells at Work. Oh my god, I'm black! I actually enjoyed this more than the original. It was way more interesting to see Cells function in an unhealthy body, even if it did make me feel shit in my own lifestyle choices. On the upside though, apparently that means having a white blood Cells that gets my Cells at Work, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's taken this long to get an actual skateboarding anime, and I can't believe the first skateboarding anime is unironically called Skate the Infinity with an 8. God, if you're gonna do that, might as well just go all the way, bring back the cool S, say it's PH fat. Cause you know what, for all these pretty skater boys, all the girls seem to have said see you later boy. This is coming from the director of Free and Banana Fish, and um... You can definitely tell that. There are definitely a lot of pretty boys, along with Gene Simmons, you got fucking Lelouchie apparently. And our main character is actually Canadian, which I think is great, because we finally get more representation in anime for my favourite country, America too. That was a joke, Canadians. It was a cheap, stupid joke. I didn't really mean it. I know Canadians are nothing like Americans. You guys are great. Please don't kill me. Oh, what are you gonna do? Apologise me to death? Let's see, what's next? Why are there children playing in the road? God damn. Oh yeah, there's new isekai this season. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm taking a leak. Look away. Look away! Oh, come on, man. Right on my book. Look, I hate spiders as much as the next guy, and I don't need some cheap spider propaganda showing up on my timeline, but god damn. Stop! Stop! 
This is a cute little spider. I don't care if you give a shit about Isekai or not, Aoyuki absolutely steals the show as a girl reincarnated as a spider. I just watched a hyperactive spider figuring out how to be a spider for 20 minutes and it was entertaining as fuck. Am I about to give best girl to a fucking arachnid? Like, not even a wife who dies, Sigmund Freudian, I wanna fuck this spider, but an actual fucking arachnid? Oh look, it's basically is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon, except the guy is actually picking up some girls. We got supposed the kid from the last dungeon boonies moved to a starter town. This is another one of those isekai-less isekai shows about... Wait, what's this show about again? Oh yeah. I don't know why Gohans insists on continuing the Handshaker's legacy, but they've really outdone themselves this time, using a literal green screen explosion effect you can find on YouTube, giving us a masterclass in visual coherency not seen since the lights of X-Arm five minutes ago. Remember that one scene from episode one of Goblin Slayer that everyone got super upset and offended over? Have you ever looked at that and thought to yourself, like, what if we made an entire show around that one scene, but just ten times worse? If you ever needed a reminder that we live in a post-interspecies reviewer's Japan, remember that a real human being was successfully convinced to give Redo of Healer an anime adaptation. I think this is the first time I've watched an <clears throat> anime, and thought to myself, I should probably chill out to something more vanilla after this. How about a bit of rant, Isekai Harum Monogatari perhaps, maybe even something wholesome like Berserk for some light reading. It's beyond edgy, it's everything people got upset about in Goblin Slayer and Shield Hero multiplied to ten Fold. It is the prime target to cause an absolute shitstorm online, except this time I don't think anyone's gonna be defending it. So, all I can say is, thank god Twitter thinks Attack on Titan CG is more offensive. Mishoku Tensei's light novel is touted as the grandfather of modern isekai and one of the greatest the genre has to offer. So, as the seasoned isekai trash man, my expectations were high coming into this, and it somehow met every one of them. It's obvious right from the get-go that this was not influenced by the cliches of other isekai, but is in fact the progenitor of them. They're not just speedrunning the death and reincarnation. Proper time is put into his life growing up and learning about this fantasy world instead of just assuming we know the ropes already. But because of this, there's a level of detail in the world building and magic systems that aren't present or are just glossed over in other isekai. The magic system isn't just control water because this is a fantasy world, there's an actual logic and structure behind it. The protagonist is an antisocial otaku, but that doesn't mean he wasn't otaku who happened to be good looking, athletic and just perfectly built to become a hero. He was a fat, stinky, ugly bastard who literally gets introduced jacking it off to hentai. He's the ugly truth of what the usual isekai protagonist should have been. He's flawed, he's hella horny, he's been bullied, he's been traumatized and this doesn't all just magically disappear because he's been reincarnated into a fantasy world. He doesn't just feel like a typical vehicle for a wish fulfillment protagonist but an actual character. So even though we are treading on concepts we've seen in so many other isekai before, it somehow feels fresh. What Watching this felt like watching The Godfather after years of only watching Gangster Squad. After seeing generations of generations of these concepts being watered down and turned into tropes and cliches, it was surreal to see the actual foundations they were all originally based on. This isn't even mentioning the insane production values that went into this. From the soundtrack to the animation, it can at times feel like a feature film production, and it's probably the best looking anime airing this season. So what is presented here feels like an anomaly. This is an isekai that's reminiscent of all the generic trash isekai of gorge myself in over the years, but just genuinely feels like a good show without any twists or gimmicks in the formula. Guys, maybe this is the isekai we've been waiting for. How long has it been? How long have those of us in the isekai garbage dump been persecuted, ridiculed, mocked for having trash taste? Just another basic bitch craving a cheap, escapist, power fantasy show with yet another bland protagonist only there for our wish fulfillment. But no more, my brothers. The winds are changing. Times are changing. Here, we could have a show, a good show, that can prove to people that maybe, just maybe, it wasn't so bad after all. Maybe there was potential to be seen that no one else could see. Underneath the 100th overpowered protagonist in the 100th fantasy world copying the 100th RPG. Maybe Isekai was never meant to be trash. Maybe it was meant to be beautiful. X-Arm, anime of the season. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much this month to Alpha Sigma, Basil, Box, 
Elifal, Joe Augustine, Mike Elfin, Payne Patchett, Walto, Zob Mondo, Ivido, and everyone else on my Patreon for making this video possible. And yeah, apart from that, I've got no further updates today, that's why I'm not on camera. So I am going to just keep it short and sweet. The season's pretty damn awesome, so I'm going to go back to watching anime for once. So I've been Gigguk, and I'll see you all next time.